Okay, good morning again. Um, Thursday. Um, we're almost at the end of, the, of another week of heck, aka <laughs> school. And, um, you know, I'm, re I'm ready to go. Um, today we're going to be talking about the Vancouver Canucks. Um, the Canucks have lost a lot in this free agency. They have lost their top goaltender, one of their top defensemen, or no, one of their defensemen, and then one of their top six forwards. Um, but they have Jim Benning. Everyone's saying, oh, fire Jim Benning, but he has been working the phones to, to get this team back to what it was. Now, no, no, no. It, I know how Canucks fans are when it comes to their team. They are very sensitive. So I'm going to try and say everything right in this video, like the Boston Bruins video, which I actually made me feel pretty good about myself because I actually, you know, did my research and all good stuff on that video. Makes me feel good that, like, you know, people actually liked it. Because there was this one Bruins fan that, you know, I think he was new to the channel. I think he, like, literally just subscribed because we gained a sub after, gained two subs from that video. Um, he said to me that that commentary was very valid and that he disagreed with none of it. And that's great. I want to kind of do the same thing for most teams. You know, I've done it for, um, let me look here. <laughs> I forget already. I've done it for, you know, I've done it for the Flyers. I've done it for the Golden Knights. I've done it for the Blue Jackets. I plan to do one for the Canadians. And, you know, the Canucks are up next. So, I thought, so you know, I'm just doing these every single day, trying to cover all the teams in the NHL, because that's my goal. And, um, you know, we're going to see how this, we're going to see how everything goes. But, again, Canucks, Canucks fans, if I get anything, if I get anything wrong, let me know in the comments below, because I know you guys are very sensitive or, well, not sensitive. I know you guys are very passionate when it comes to your team. So, I, I, I absolutely respect that, by the way. That's I, that's absolute respect. You should be very, very passionate by your team. But, we're going to talk about how much the Canucks have lost, but they gained back. So, you know, I'm going to do the same format for Boston. I have the defensive impact and the offensive impact. Um, and then I have their cap space here, which is something I didn't, I don't think I included for Boston. Um, Vancouver cap space is $1.9 million. So if you're looking to go out and get a top six forward Vancouver, which is what I know you guys were looking for, turn around. You're not going to look, you're not going to find it. You're not going to find it anywhere. So I would recommend, um, there's really, there's really no other way besides trading someone with high cap. But yeah, um, on the defensive impact, they lost Troy Stetcher. Um, Troy Stetcher was a huge problem. I remember that. You know, he went to the Detroit Red Wings, and it's a problem because Stetcher, you know, he's he lost his father, and it's kind of a sad way. It's kind of sad the way he went out for Vancouver. You know, the the, the emotional first-round win against the Lightning, against the Lightning, against the Blues was undoubtedly great. You know, you almost, you almost went to the conference finals against Vegas. You were only one game away, and Demko pretty much led you past Vegas. I knew Vegas was going to win. I didn't think it would be in seven games, though. So, you got to give credit to it where it's due to the defense. So, yeah, you lost a very big top four defenseman. But, you did gain back, I think, a much better... I think a... Not a much better defenseman, but a defenseman that can replace... <coughs> Excuse me, because I like to sneeze while I'm doing videos. Um, I You guys found a defenseman... That can potentially replace Troy Stetcher, and that is Nate Schmidt. Now Nate Schmidt came from Vegas just a few days ago, um, off of a cap dump by Vegas. You know they acquired a third round pick from it. Vegas did, and I think that you know both teams won it because Vegas got the cap dump and Vancouver got a very solid defenseman to, be, to put in their top four to replace him. And you know, this guy can play where it's due. This guy can play on the penalty kill. He can play on the power play. He's a very solid defender. You know, he's coming from a team that beat the, that beat the enemy team last last season. So, you know, Schmidt can bring his intelligence from the, Vegas, from the Vegas Golden Knights team and apply that to the Canucks team. Or maybe, or maybe since he was on the winning team of that series against the Canucks, he can tell the Canucks what they need to do to have sustained success and get past... And get past whether they face Vegas in the playoffs again or not. Which I'm sure is going to be a reality because they're division rivals. And, you know, I think that that was a very good defensive acquirement by Jim Benning. I think that Jim Benning 
you know, it really, it, it, they, he kind of, he kind of lucked out and went into their hands. But if they didn't, if they didn't acquire Schmidt, there would be a huge hole there. Um, this is a hole that likely will never be, um, will never be filled unless if Jacob, Mar unless if like they get like the best goaltender in the league, like Andre Vezelovsky or something. What the heck is? Oh, that's my. There's like something on my stool that's like on my phone, but it's one, part of my phone case. Um, they lost Jacob Markstrom. And that was massive. I know that I know that he I know that he gained a lot of interest. He gained a he gained a crap ton of interest over the um over the past couple of months. And I, I was like I was like, you know, you have Demko and Jacob Marstrom. Those two are gonna be a very good goaltending tandem. Whether who wants to be a starter or not, you offer you offer Marstrom, like I don't know, a two year contract, like you offered Holtby, and we'll get into that in a second. But um you offer Markstrom a two year contract and you're fine. You have the, you have probably one of the best goaltending tandems in the league. You have a an amazing goaltender, Jacob Marstrom, and you have an amazing goaltender, Thatcher Demko. I don't know what the Canucks were thinking, not re-signing Markstrom. They had enough space. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, you know, so they lost Markstrom to Calgary, uh, for a six-year deal worth six million dollars, and what came back isn't exactly what the Canucks really need, but it is it is it is nonetheless good. So the Vancouver Canucks acquired from free agency Braden Holtby, signing him to a two-year deal, and I think that you know he's not here to be the number one goaltender. He's here to be which that Thatcher Demko, and I think that's the plan. I think the plan is to have Thatcher Demko as starter, and Holtby is the probably the backup. And you know these guys are gonna be sharing games throughout this. These guys are gonna be sharing multiple games throughout the season, and I think that you know with Holtby, he's gonna be playing not the majority of the games, but I'd say about half of the games, and then Demko will play the other half of the games. You know, they got to balance this out. They got to test this out and see how Holpe and, Holpe and Demko play in their first season. So, you know, we're going to see how they play. On the offensive side of things, they didn't lose too much when it came to some things, but they did lose a pretty decently big UFA, defense, UFA um, top six forward. Um, now, I do know that Jake Vertanen and uh, Brandon Sutter are in salary arbitration. We're going to see what happens with them. Um, I don't have anything to say of them currently because I don't really understand the salary arbitration stuff. But yeah, um, the offensive impact. They lost Tyler to Foley. Um, that basically means the trade was the trade they made trading um, Tyler Madden and I think it was a pick for Tyler to Foley was basically just a wasted 17 games. I mean, when you look at it, if the Canucks could have gotten past Vegas in game five, I think they honestly could have probably won the cup. Or they honestly could have made it to the finals. Um, you know, that Canucks team, especially if they had, if Jeffrey Demko was absolutely insane, they would be unstoppable. Like, honestly, they would just be unstoppable against, um, against Dallas, to be completely honest. I think, you know, Dallas, you know, they were also coming off of a Game 7 loss, so it depends really what happens in that series, but we can't predict that. But, you know, Toffoli was a great kind of... To fully the whole time, I know Canucks fans. I know I said I'm gonna respect your team the most way possible. To fully was a rental, and him leaving is that is basically says that. Um, you know, I had a feeling he was gonna be. I had a feeling he was gonna be a rental. I had a feeling this guy was gonna be the rental for the Canucks heading into the playoffs, especially since it happened around the around the trade deadline. And you know, they needed they needed a good top six forward like him, and you know he comes in. And to be honest, him with, with him leaving, and they haven't really gained anything back yet. At the time recording this video, they haven't gained anything back. But to be honest, it's honestly just the same team as it was before he came. I mean, you're st you're still in search of a top six forward. Um, I don't think they're gonna get that anywhere though. That's the problem because look at their cap space. Um, they're not gonna get like Mike Hoffman. They're not gonna get like Mackenzie Weaker. They're not gonna get. Dead enough. They're not going to get any of these guys in free agency, most likely. They're not going to get them through trade because that's impossible. There's really no top six forward that's below a million. That's below two million dollars. It's really tough when it comes to Vancouver. They're in the dilemma where they need a top six forward, and I think that you know, with this, they're really going to have to find one soon. So, and they need to find one before the next season starts, or there's going to be a, there's going to be a huge hole, and you're going to clearly tell, or they're. Or they're gonna have to move someone out with high cap space to to get someone in with to get to get a top six forward in. So 
you know, it's it's going to be really confusing. Let me know, Canucks fans, what you think about this, what you think about your recent moves from your Canucks and stuff in the comments below. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you if you did enjoy, do make sure to like and subscribe. I know we are trying to get to 6 subscribers by the end of the year. Do not get mad at me, Canucks fans. I'm not exactly the biggest Vancouver Canucks fans in the world. Vancouver Canucks fan in the world. I don't know that much about Vancouver. I watched them a lot in the playoffs, but I didn't know. I don't know uh, everything about them. So yeah. Anyways, that's it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoy, um, make sure to subscribe if you want to. Um, and thank you guys for the support. The support's been unreal lately. You know, we were stuck at 525 subscribers for the longest time, but I think we're finally on the move again. So yeah. And I mean, it is the off season, so I don't expect to gain like a million subscribers. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.